What's going on everyone? I'm back and today we are continuing our ongoing look at some more fantasy football mock drafts. And as you can see, we are back on ESPN. We're going to be doing a 12 team mock. The only difference here is this will be my first installment of a standard format. Uh, I don't envision it on being too different. Uh, obviously there will be some small differences with uh, rankings of some certain players, but I'll touch on those as we go along. Other than that, uh, let's get right into it. We have got the fifth pick overall, so we'll be picking that top five uh, selection. And not too many people on auto pick as of right now, so hopefully this will be pretty accurate. Um, but as far as some of the players that have gone, let's already deep dive that. We see Z going first overall. Uh, obviously, that's a little bit of a surprise. Uh, you would say Le'Veon and David Johnson are the top guys in whatever the format is, but I still love Zeke. Uh, I don't know that I love him first overall, but I'm, I think he's my number three guy right after Le'Veon and David Johnson. Um, I expect a very big year from Ezekiel Elliott in 2018, but enough of that because we are on the clock, and if this was PPR, the pick here for me would honestly be Antonio Brown in all likelihood, but since I do want to land a stud running back, uh, I'm going to go ahead here and take Saquon Barkley at number five, just because I do think that Barkley uh, does have a little bit more touchdown potential than uh, and pretty much any of the top wide receivers. Um, you know, to me, he's just under that top tier group of running backs. Uh, but either way, I think uh, it was either between him and Antonio Brown with that fifth pick overall. You kind of even see someone else with the sixth pick when another running back in Leonard Fournette over Antonio Brown. So you kind of see that uh, uh, difference here a little bit in standard versus PPR. Antonio Brown uh, is pretty much a for sure top five pick in PPR, whereas here in a standard league, you're going to put a bigger importance on running backs. And personally, I think that's how it should be, no matter the format. Um, and then we can kind of look at some of the other players that have gone. Alvin Kamara with the eighth pick overall. You know, I think he takes a little bit more of a hit in standard formats. Um, I'd probably stay away from him in standard leagues. Um, and honestly, probably stay away from him in general because of the recent price tag he's had. And considering uh, the usage that is surrounding him. And just a little bit uh, nervous with uh, the whole Kamara and then Ingram situation in New Orleans. But other than that, we're seeing another run on wide receiver start here with Odell, with Julio Jones, uh, and then <laughs> Melvin Gordon followed by Travis Kelsey. And that little scoff there was obviously because Travis Kelsey was the pick. Um, I Obviously, that's a huge reach at the end of the first round. Uh, but no matter, uh, hopefully things won't get too crazy and we can still put together a go good group of uh, players. Uh, because of that selection, uh, guys like DeAndre Hopkins, Kareem Hunt, Dalvin Cook dropped. Uh, you saw Melvin Gordon go with the second to last pick in the first round. I really like Melvin Gordon. Uh, I do like him, admittedly so, a little bit more in PPR. Um, I probably would take him uh, in the second, early second round in a standard league. Or I think that's that's probably the right spot. I would have Dalvin Cook ranked in front of him. Uh, I think he's a little bit more of that physical running back. Uh, obviously, he does have the injury concerns associated with him, so that's always something to keep an eye on. Um, we just had Keenan Allen go, and again, that's a guy that I would bump down in standard leagues. To me, he just doesn't have that much of an upside uh, as he does in PPR, just because probably every other game, Keenan Allen is getting you something like 10 receptions. So even if it's, you know, half PPR league or a full PPR league, that's between five and 10 points that he's going to get you additionally. Whereas in standard, you don't get that bump. So for that reason, I kind of uh, demote him a little bit. And then we had LaShawn McCoy go. Again, for me, LaShawn McCoy, I would rank him lower uh, then, you know, guys like that are still left, Christian McCaffrey, Devonta Freeman. Uh, that offense in Buffalo really scares me. I think it's very one-dimensional. So for that reason, I would stay away from LaShawn McCoy. And again, I also think he's more of a PPR running back. 
Um, but at the same time, when it comes to value, I've seen it with McCoy dropping to the start of the third round. That is pretty difficult to pass up. Um, then we had Michael Thomas go, followed by Devonta Freeman. Devonta Freeman would have probably been my pick in all likelihood um, if if he hadn't gone right before. But instead, I'm going to go with the next best available player. I do think that's A.J. Green, um, and considerably so because uh, Christian McCaffrey, you see the ranking here. Uh, ESPN has him as the 19th best ranked player. Obviously, you know, we still have some time before the fantasy season starts. But to me, Christian McCaffrey uh, isn't a top 19 player. Uh, honestly, I put out I put out my rankings for um, for my top running back, top 25 running backs for the season. If you guys go check that out, you can see where I kind of have him ranked, and then I kind of break it down in terms of standard formats. But uh, in PPR, sure, middle of the second round. But in standard, I honestly wouldn't touch Christian McCaffrey. Then. And you kind of see that being reflected here. Honestly, Mike Evans, Devontae Adams, all going before Christian McCaffrey, even though we know that the running back position is so important. Um, then even Rob Gronkowski. Uh, you know, Gronk is an interesting selection. Uh, I probably don't touch him in the second round. Maybe if I have back-to-back -back picks and the player that I, you know, really had my heart set on is gone. You know, you can't be too mad at a... And Gronk, who's a tight end, who pretty much, you know, plays like a wide receiver one. So for that reason, it, you know, it's tough to knock that position. But at the same time, uh, I would have rather gone with, you know, maybe a T.Y. Hilton, a Doug Baldwin, uh, something like that. Uh, and kind of just scrolling down here a little bit. Interestingly enough, uh, the next group of running backs that I personally have kind of highlighted here. Jarek McKinnon and Joe Mixon at the 36 and 37 range. Honestly, uh, that would put them at the end of the third round and the start of the fourth, which, uh, you know, in this in this standard format, is very different than PPR because usually one of these guys probably in PPR goes at the end of the second round, usually being Jarek McKinnon and then Joe Mixon going at the start of the third round. Um, so that's another little bit of a difference here. Also, Jordan Howard significantly gets a bump in standard formats, uh, early third round. So right now, I don't think if I waited, I would be able to get Jarek McKinnon or Joe Mixon because I do think, uh, pretty much after Christian McCaffrey, uh, who just went by the way, uh, at the start of the third round, which is, I think where probably a perfect spot for him in standard leagues, uh, but they are my next best uh, group of running backs. And honestly, I actually have uh, Joe Mixon, I think, is a little bit of a safer pick than Jarek McKinnon just because McKinnon got that huge contract. Um, and I do think that he's more of a PPR running back, even though Joe Mixon, you could make the argument that he is as well. Uh, but the reason I won't go with Mixon here is because I already have A.J. Green, and I really do try and avoid going that combination of uh, a running back and a wide receiver on the same team. Uh, so instead, I'm going to go Doug Baldwin, actually. And I think Doug Baldwin's going to have a very good year, uh, no matter in standard or PPR, honestly. Probably a little bit, uh, you can make the argument, it was a little bit early to take him. Um, but I really like his upside. You know, this is right around where Doug Baldwin has gone. Uh, start of the third round and I think he is even more of a steal in PPR formats I've been harping on that and honestly I could make probably an entire video uh, of breaking down why Doug Baldwin can be you know a top 10 wide receiver and I honestly think he's gonna be uh, probably like the Keenan Allen of 20 2018 uh, because with so many weapons gone in Seattle I think Russell Wilson is gonna go back to targeting Baldwin big time um, and I think that'll do very good thing for Doug Baldwin owners in fantasy this year um, so let's look at some of these other players Josh Gordon he is a player that I like he has very good uh, potential and you know middle of the third round uh, I think it's pretty good value uh, you've seen it his value has fluctuated and I think it'll continue to fluctuate because just 
I would say people aren't certain what to expect from him. If you could guarantee Gordon being there for the entire 16 weeks, uh, I think his value would jump up even more. Uh, and, you know, there's the other factor of who will be the Cleveland Browns quarterback uh, to consider. But either way, I think Josh Gordon is a very interesting player. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't mind having him on my team. Uh, I'd even probably be all right calling him a low tier wide receiver number one. Uh, but other than that, let's keep on going. Jarek McKinnon then going towards the, at the middle of the seventh, uh, third round, then Tyreek Hill, Joe Mixon, and like I said, I knew these guys wouldn't last all the way back to me, but I'm alright with that. So far, I very much so like my team, and, um, and let's keep it going. Larry Fitzgerald, Demarius Thomas, Amari Cooper, uh, some interesting names here. I think Demarius Thomas is a very interesting wide receiver. Obviously, the last couple of years he has underperformed, uh, but it's interesting to see what we could expect from him with a decent, uh, or with what Denver thinks is an upgraded quarterback. Um, and then Amari Cooper, I think pretty good value at the end of the third round. Stephon Diggs at the start of the fourth round is ridiculously good value, I would say. Um, I love that pick for whoever landed him. Um, and then keeping this going, another player that I really like here, if he is available, either Juju Smith-Schuster to fill out my flex position or a guy in Darius Geis to fill out my running back number two slot. I will say having two running backs, two rookie running backs on top of that does make me pretty nervous. I'm not going to lie, but I do think after Saquon Barkley, Darius Geis is going to be the next best uh, rookie running back. And, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind uh, trying to test that out. I think he has probably something close to Dalvin Cook potential of last year, as long as he stays healthy. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to go ahead and land at least uh, either Juju Smith or Darius Geis. And I would probably uh, rank guys over Juju Smith right now because I still don't have that running back number two. We'll see what happens. Let's kind of look at some of the other remaining running backs. Kenyon Drake, uh, you know, that situation uh, in Miami gives me a little bit of a worry just because I don't know how involved Frank Gore will be, but I think it'll be enough so where he's going to take away opportunities from Kenyon Drake. Uh, so I would probably avoid Drake. Um, Ronald Jones of Tampa Bay, you know, he's a name to keep an eye on, but for me, with the situation uh, in Tampa with uh, James Winston getting in trouble and being suspended, uh, that knocks down pretty much every player offensively for the Bucks. Um, you see an Alex Collins, Marshawn Lynch, Jay Ajayi. Interestingly enough, Jay Ajayi is still available um, in the middle of the fourth round, I think. Uh, I think that's a pretty good value for him, honestly. I will say that, you know, he does uh, favor more so the uh, standard format. Uh, you know, Darren Sproles still over there. And there is still a good group of running backs. And I would say Philly is more of a passing team. That's why I somewhat understand why Ajay is still available. But if he was somehow still there uh, at with my next pick, it'd be very hard for me to avoid him uh, or to go another player. Uh, just because I think that's, again, very good value. And whenever I draft, I do tend to go best player available. Um, unless, you know, there is a glaring need on my roster. Uh, but so far, you know, and as soon as I finish saying that, Jay Ajayi is taken with the next pick. So never mind, that will not be the player that we go after. But uh, let's kind of break down our roster so far. Saquon Barkley, Darius Geis, AJ Green, and Doug Baldwin. Um, actually really happy with this so far. Obviously, the success of this team uh, were it an actual one would depend on the rookie performances because I actually re feel very comfortable with the group of wide receivers that I have. I think AJ Green bounces back in a huge way this year. Uh, to me, the Bengals did a very good job upgrading that offensive line during the offseason and during the draft. So 
I think that entire offense is going to go ahead and uh, take a step in the right direction. From there, uh, Doug Baldwin, like I said, I I'd be comfortable with Doug Baldwin as a wide receiver number one. And for that reason, I love my wide receivers, actually, my running backs. I do think Saquon Barkley is going to be a very good player. Uh, but I do think there might be some early, you know, disappointments uh, while he gets his footing underneath him and kind of gets adjusted to the NFL lifestyle and that, you know, just next level kind of competition. Uh, and there's still some questions to be had when it comes to that Giants offensive line. But I still do say that I think he was the next best available player when I uh, went ahead and picked number five overall. But enough of that. Let's kind of look at who is still left. Ronald Jones, Alex Collins, Marshawn Lynch, guys that I am not too high on, honestly. Um, scrolling down this list. Um... A guy that I like is Greg Olson, but at number 73 overall, we'll see if he's still available. There's some other tight ends that I still really like. Uh, Lamar Miller, an interesting name. Um, I had a video out on him as well, trying to convince folks why they should go ahead and take a chance on him. And if he's still there in the sixth round, I definitely am going to go ahead and try and select him. Uh, but for now, I went ahead and selected Marvin Jones. I really liked what Jones did at the end of last year. I think him and Stafford really had a nice connection. Had over a thousand yards, uh, was relevant in the red zone, and I think that is going to continue this year. Um, you know, Stafford does a very good job of airing out the football, and I think whether it's Golden Tate or Marvin Jones, uh, they're both gonna, you know, benefit from that. I think Marvin Jones is whether it's standard league or PPR league, uh, a very good player, whereas his teammate in Golden Tate is more of a PPR guy, probably someone I'd stay away from in standard leagues. Um, but continuing our look at some of these selections, Greg Olson unfortunately went and uh, was selected with the next pick overall, which you know kind of makes sense. Uh, actually, definitely makes sense. Uh, more so, interestingly enough, is why he was ranked so low in these rankings. That's why, like I said, none of... Yeah, even though these rankings have been updated throughout this process, uh, they are by no means complete. So they're going to be changing. And, you know, uh, these are the rankings on ESPN, but they're completely different for the most part. Uh, if you go on Yahoo or if you go on Fantasy Football Calculator, NFL, whatever you use. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I suggest whoever, um, whoever is drafting and, you know, whatever you're doing with that just have a group of guys that you personally like and go by that more than you know what some other experts think um, so then you don't find yourself in a situation where you know you're doubting whether you made the right pick in terms of value things like that what round should you select him and kind of forcing yourself to reach on a player uh, but you know that's that's the topic for another time in the meantime you know this roster I think is coming together pretty good. I'll make a couple more selections, uh, and I think that'll be enough to get an overall idea of what this roster looks like. Um, a guy like Tom Brady still available. Uh, maybe a little bit tempting, but honestly, I do think Tom Brady is going to uh, kind of decline this year, starting this year, and I'm gonna stay away from him. There's some other guys here that are still intriguing. Uh, Devontae Parker. Um, Lamar Miller still there uh, so probably the guy that I'm gonna honestly target next Sammy Watkins is an interesting name uh, Kansas City paid a boatload of money for him this offseason uh, but I've honestly never really been the biggest Sammy Watkins fan and uh, I'm probably gonna continue to stay away from him I don't know what Patrick Mahomes is gonna provide so I think better safe than sorry and then two picks away until I am back on the board and I'm gonna queue up Lamar Miller we'll see what happens maybe knowing my luck so far in this draft he will be picked right uh, right before I get a chance to select uh, then going down this list you kind of see some other of these other uh, players I think uh, this group of quarterbacks uh, pretty interesting Cam Newton Carson Wentz Russell Wilson Deshaun Watson 
Uh, you know, a lot of people have Deshaun Watson ranked as the number two quarterback right after Aaron Rodgers. I personally don't, especially after coming off that injury. I don't think what he did last year was sustainable. Uh, Cam Newton and Russell Wilson are my next best available quarterbacks personally. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead, take Lamar Miller. I think this is very good value for him. And I am still drafting him as a bench player. So honestly, this doesn't this doesn't bother me too much. And if he goes ahead and does really well, I'm going to feel very comfortable with having a backup option to those two rookie running backs. Because like I said, uh, with Lamar Miller, if he doesn't get it figured out this year, I don't think he ever will. So for that reason, uh, I'm going and betting on Lamar Miller to have a successful season. Um, and I will be back on the board in a little bit. And the guys that I'm looking at here, probably going to go um, quarterback, actually. And the guys that I really like here would, like I said, either be Cam Newton or Russell Wilson. I do like Jordan Reed. I think he could potentially have a very good year as long as he stays healthy because we all know that's his biggest issue. Um, oh, I also see Marlon Mack here, who I really like, um, and is another guy like Lamar Miller, who I think has very high potential. Uh, so I might reach for him, actually. Kyle Rudolph, another player that I really like uh, at the tight end position that you can get relatively cheaper. Uh, and you saw Russell Wilson and Cam Newton both go before I got a chance to select. So honestly, uh, I'm going to put off selecting a quarterback even more so now. Um, I really liked Russell Wilson, Cam Newton's ability to scramble and get some of those rushing touchdowns. But uh, right now, I'm going to avoid that a little bit. And you can see a lot of players went on auto pick. So um, we, won't, we won't drag this out too long. I'm going to go ahead, select Marlon Mack, uh, queue up some other players to kind of get an idea of who we could possibly land. Um, I'm going to probably stay away from a guy like Carson Wentz just because he most likely almost 100% doesn't start the season as the starting quarterback coming back from his injury. Uh, and Deshaun Watson, uh, you know, like I said, I don't know what to expect from him coming back from that injury. Uh, so instead, at the quarterback position, I'm going to go ahead and queue up Jimmy Garoppolo, who I think will have a very good year. Um, and then at the tight end position, I already have Kyle Rudolph uh, queued up. So I think we can at this point kind of wrap things up. Look, Taking a final look at this roster, uh, assuming that we can go ahead and land Saquon Bar or sorry, Jimmy Garoppolo uh, and Kyle Rudolph. Uh, let's say, for the sake of argument, the final roster features Garoppolo, Saquon Barkley, Darius Geis, A.J. Green, Doug Baldwin, Marvin Jones at the flex, Kyle Rudolph as the tight end, Lamar Miller, Marlon Mack on the bench. Um, and honestly, I think that is a very nice combination. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I haven't done that many standard mocks, like I said, uh, just because, you know, I feature more PPR things, uh, but I think this turned out pretty well. Let me know what you guys think. I really like the upside of my bench players, and that's how I would how I would personally urge you guys as well to go ahead and draft with your bench guys, uh, guys that you feel comfortable plugging in at some point in time, guys that you think can uh, have potential to be a wide receiver number two or running back number two, uh, basically high ceiling guys. Um, and like I said, I think we did a good job here. So let me know what you guys think. Do you, uh, how would you grade this roster? I feel pretty comfortable giving it something between uh, a B, B plus um, in that range. Like I said, the, the reason I probably give it that is because the rookie running back combination gives me a little bit uh, angst, but let me know. Let me hear it in the comment section uh, if you enjoyed like, subscribe,